welcome back to a new episode with Nottingham Forest to the end of our first season here, the best season we had so far. So let's start with the season review. New arrivals. Of course, Hendrik got signing of the season. We only paid uh, almost 19 million for him. He had 18 starting appearances and 24 as a sub, scored 24 goals and got 9 assists. A good overall rating, a B plus from the board. Belio Garasi, he also scored a bunch of goals. Ulri got a B plus, what a great wonder kid he has been. 9 goals and 7 assists. Karnesechi got an A plus because of his uh, lower wages and probably because we only paid 3 million for him. What a bargain. Simon's got a B. We paid a lot of money for him, but I believe it was worth it. Scalvini got an A+. Plus. Of course he did. What a season this guy had with us. He had 51 starting appearances. That's a lot. Peterson got a C. Sutalo got a B+. Plus. Valeri was a good player. An A-. minus. Mansberg a B-, minus. but to tell you the truth, I'm disappointed with him. Affengruber got a B+. Plus. Uh, he's probably gonna leave transfers out Joe Worrell got a C plus Van Heusden got a C we got 17.5 million I was happy with that amount of money maybe I could have kept Paulinia because I was disappointed with man's work Sutalo got a C plus we got 40 million for Sutalo we got a lot of money for Andre a C plus from the board Masias a C plus Gagliardini only a C I didn't really want it to sell this guy because he was a model professional and so on I'm not gonna go through each of them let's see the season's results only a B plus for challenging for the Premier League even though the board only wanted us to finish mid table in the Champions League of course we got an A plus probably an A plus for the FA Cup just an A okay only a C for the League Cup, we got knocked out pretty early, and a C plus for uh, the Community Shield. Moments to remember, biggest win a 6-1 against Wolves, of course, a match to remember a 2-1 against Man City, okay, and uh, unbelievable, the guy that I'm disappointed with actually scored the goal of the season, let's see it. It was against Crystal Palace when uh, Belio and Hendrik both got a rating of 10. Yeah, that was lovely. Come on, that's the goal of the season. Okay, moving on to finances. Yes, we've increased our uh, reputation from continental to worldwide. Just like it says right here, this will help us to attract a higher caliber of player to the club, help our support base grow and greatly improve our commercial revenue. But I believe we will also attract better sponsors. We increased our annual revenue, of course, especially in competition money. Look at that, 141 million. We increased a little bit in sponsorships. We actually dropped a little bit in broadcast revenue. Not much. Simons, Johnson, Shelderup, Awani and Gaisedo's shirt sold particularly well. And we got a total merchandise sales of 5.75 million. How I lined up? Pretty much our best 11. Lafont, Valeri, Sutalo, Scalvini, Williams, Mansworth, Gibbs, White and Simons. Yes, that because Caicedo dropped in form when he was upset because I didn't let him go to Arsenal. Ulrich, Belio and Hendrik, the one in nowhere to be seen around here. I was named head coach of the month three times in November, January and May. I did not win uh, the manager of the year. Probably Liverpool's uh, manager took it. I don't think he's Jurgen Klopp anymore. I'm not sure. Anyway, player awards, fans player of the season, Hendrik, Young Player of the Season, Belio, not Hendrik, okay, Signing of the Season, Hendrik, Goal of the Season, we saw it, I agree with it. Even though Hendrik and Belio scored a lot of goals, it was Awani who finished up goal scorer with 28. Most assists, Brennan Jones or 14, Awani got the most Player of the Match awards with 7. Highest average rating, Belio, 7.4 and most passes completed per 90 minutes, 74 from Scalvini. Record breakers, most goals by a player in a league match, Belio with 4, worst discipline, Holm Green Peterson, 20 yellow cards, 20 yellow cards, that's a lot of cards, and 1 red card, highest fee paid, 44 million for Xavi Simons, highest transfer fee received, 48 million for Andre, youngest goal scorer, Hendrik, 18 years and 24 days, competition awards, 
just like last season when Shelter Up was up here, this time it was Hendrik who won the next gen and the English player's young player of the year. Congratulations, mate. History in the making, I believe so. Who knows when we're gonna win the Champions League again. We've won the FA Cup twice in a row and I'm pretty impressed with that. And we finished on equal points with the champions Liverpool. Now, if you guys are familiar with my underdog save, and if you're not, please check it out. It's an amazing save. You would know that at the end of every season, I go through the five big leagues and show you guys what happened, who won the league, who qualified for which European competition and who got relegated. I want to do this in this save as well. So we're going to go through the last three seasons and we're going to start with the Premier League. And I'm going to show you guys the championship as well, just to see who got promoted every season. Here's the first season when we actually finished fifth and Southampton had uh, an amazing season as well. We had Liverpool winning the league, City, United and Newcastle qualified for the Champions League, Forest and Southampton qualified for the Europa League, Chelsea for the Conference League, Arsenal also qualified for the Champions League, so that means they've probably won the Europa League, and West Ham qualified for the Europa League, probably by winning the Conference League. We had Wolves, Brighton, and Fulham relegated. And in the Championship, we had Norwich qualifying as champions, Watford and Hull City with West Brom, Bristol, and Reading relegated. Next season, Man City won the league, Liverpool, Man United, Forest and Arsenal qualified for the Champions League. We had Newcastle and Norwich qualifying for the Europa League. Chelsea for the Conference League and Southampton probably won the Europa League because they've qualified for the Champions League as well. And we had Leeds, Watford and Hull City relegated. In the Championship, Burnley got promoted as Champions, Wolves and Fulham. And we had Preston, Coventry and Wycombe relegated and in the current season Leeds United got promoted once again to the Premier League alongside Watford and Hull City, Millwall, Ipswich and Derby County got relegated and as you guys know Liverpool won the league. We have Forest, City, Chelsea and Man United qualifying for the Champions League, Arsenal and Aston Villa to the Europa League. We have a surprise here with Fulham qualifying for Conference League. We also have Newcastle qualifying to the Champions League. So the Premier League teams won a few European trophies in these first three seasons. We have Brentford, Burnmouth and Burnley relegated. Leicester managed to survive once again. Now let's see Ligue 1. In the first season PSG were champions. Monaco and Rennes qualified to the Champions League, Nice and Strasbourg to the uh, Europa League, with Lyonnais only qualifying for the Conference League. Four teams got relegated to lose Ajaccio, Lens and Lorient. In the next season, of course, PSG won the league once again. Monaco and Lille qualified to the Champions League, Rennes and Nice. What? Rennes and Nice both qualified to the Conference League? Why? I have no idea. Lyonnais missing out on Europe, I guess. With Bordeaux qualifying to the Europa League, we had only two teams relegated, Nantes and Dion. And in the current season, of course, PSG won it again. Monaco, Nice and Lyonnais qualify to the Champions League. We have Rennes and Marseille to the Europa League with Lille qualifying only to the Conference League. Amiens and Auxerre got relegated. Moving on to Serie A. First season AC Milan won the league. We have Juventus, Inter and Lazio qualified to the Champions League with Roma, Fiorentina to the Europa League and Napoli finishing only 7th and that only got them a Conference League spot. We had Sampdoria, Spezia and Cremonese relegated. Next season Inter won the league, Atalanta finishing second and qualifying to the Champions League alongside AC Milan and Juventus, Roma and Lazio to the Europa League, Napoli again finishing seventh and getting a spot in the Conference League, Lecce, Parma and Cagliari got relegated and in the current season Juventus won the league, Lazio, Roma and AC Milan qualified to the Champions League, Napoli and Inter to the Europa League with Fiorentina finishing 7 to qualify. For the Conference League, we have Atalanta out of Europe, Venezia, Udinese and Padova got relegated. Let's see La Liga. 
per season Real Madrid World Champions, Barcelona Atletico Madrid and Villarreal qualify to the Champions League, Betis and Bilbao to the Europa League with Sevilla qualifying to the Conference League, Elche, Almeria and Valladolid got relegated, Valencia only finishing 10th. Next season Barcelona won the league, Real Madrid, Atletico and Sevilla qualified to the Champions League. Villarreal also qualified to the Champions League, okay, I'm not sure why. We have uh, Betis and uh, Real Sociedad qualifying to the Europa League with Espanyol making it to the Conference League. Again, Valencia missing out on Europe. We have Cartagena, something like that, Sporting Gijón and Tenerife relegated. And in the current season, Real Madrid won the league once again. Atletico Sevilla, Barcelona and Villarreal qualifying to the Champions League. We have Betis and Sociedad once again in the Europa League with Cadiz qualifying to the Conference League. Again, Valencia missing out on Europe. Girona, Leganes and Eibar got relegated. Bundesliga. No surprises, Bayern München of course have won the league. We in the first season, Leipzig, Dortmund and Mühen Gladbach qualified to the Champions League. Leverkusen and Wolfsburg to the Europa League. Stuttgart getting a place in the Conference League. Bochum, Eintracht Frankfurt and Augsburg got relegated next season. Bayern München once again champions. Dortmund, Leipzig and Stuttgart. Stuttgart surprisingly getting a Champions League spot. Okay. Wolfsburg and Leverkusen qualified to the Europa League. Union Berlin making it to the Conference League. We have Mühen Gladbach. Unbelievable. They've finished in a Champions League spot a season before and now they got relegated alongside Werder Bremen. And in the last season, well, big surprise, Bayern München won the league again. Leipzig, Stuttgart and Dortmund qualified to the Champions League. Union Berlin and Köln got to the Europa League with Wolfsburg qualifying to the Conference League. We have Bayern Leverkusen out of Europe. So was Hertha with Hamburg and Hannover relegated now let's see who won the cups the first fa cup of this save was won by liverpool 4-1 against wolves and you know we've won the next two against the manchester city 2-0 and 4-0 in the first season liverpool won the league they won the fa cup and the league cup 5-1 after extra time against southampton yeah uh, southampton had uh, a really good season uh, Manchester City won it in uh, the second season and recently Chelsea 3-0 against Leicester. The DFV Pokal was won by Bayern München, 3-1 against Schalke, Leipzig on penalties against Hamburg and again Bayern München 1-0 against Eintracht Frankfurt. The Italian Cup was won by AC Milan after extra time against Juventus. NC Milan once again 3-1 against Napoli and Juventus on penalties against uh, Napoli. The Spanish Cup was won by Barcelona 2-0 against Sevilla, Real Madrid 1-0 after extra time against Barcelona and Barcelona once again 3-1 against Bilbao. And the Coupe de France was won by PSG, Bordeaux, okay, 3-1 against Reims and PSG 1-0 against Bordeaux. Bordeaux making it all the way to two finals. Now let's see who won uh, the Conference League. In the first season, West Ham won it 1-0 against uh, Betis Sevilla. Sevilla next season 2-1 after extra time against Napoli and Chelsea winning it 4-0 against Union Berlin. Europa League. Arsenal 3-1 after extra time against Napoli. Southampton 2-1 against Roma and Newcastle after extra time 1-0 against Sporting. So it seems like Europa League is something that uh, attracts <laughs> English teams. The first Champions League was won by Manchester City 1-0 against Real Madrid. Okay, so City got their hands on their first Champions League trophy. Next season, Liverpool won it 3-2 after extra time against Barcelona. And you all know from last episode, what a spectacular final we had away at Bayern München. It wasn't a neutral venue, come on mate. And we've won it 4-2 after extra time, after we were 2-0 down. Now, I just want to ask you guys if you please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and leave a comment for Nottingham Forest, for these uh, heroes that you see right here. I believe they deserve it. We had an amazing season. Thank you. Now, most appearances... Scalvini got 51, Sutalo 46, 46 for Lafont, Caicedo got 44, and the least players that I used, Bellingham got only 4 starting appearances, but I used him 19 times as a sub, 
I think Gruber of course only got 6 with 6 as a sub. Ryan Yates got 10. Hey, it's decent for Ryan Yates. I got Carnesegi playing 16 times. Good for him. Now, a goal scored. Once again, a one. He was top goal scorer with 28. We have Hendrik and Bellio both with 24 goals. Yeah, we scored a lot of goals and it was an amazing season for our strikers. And after that, there's a big gap because we have Ulrich and uh, Scalvini with 9. Sheldrop and Niakate with 8, Johnson got 7, Simons got 6, Gibbs Weiss, Sutalo got 5, and so on. Assists, we have Johnson with 14, Sheldrop got 13, but he got a nasty injury in February. Fofana got 12, even though I'm a little bit disappointed with him, and I might sell him this uh, summer. He's wanted only by Aston Villa, okay. Gibbs White got 11, good for him, and we got 9. Ulrich and Caicedo got 7, we have uh, Simons and Valeri with 6, 5 assists for Bellingham, Peterson and Christiansen and uh, so on. Average rating, we have Bellio with 7.39, followed closely by Hendrik with uh, 7.38, Awani, Johnson, Ulrich and so on. Yeah, like I said, I'm really disappointed with men's work. I mean, Christiansen also had a poor season. But uh, this guy was a backup and I really had high hopes for uh, Mansberg. I don't know, maybe I'll keep him, maybe I'll sell him, I'm not sure. We'll see. Transfer values went up, I believe, a little bit. We have Simons, it's around 100 million. Hendrik cost a lot, so is Luke Thomas. Look at Luke Thomas. Or Brennan Johnson, Neko Williams is up there. Yeah, I believe the reputation also affects the transfer values on your players. Even Effengruber, yeah, he's listed, costs 15 million. How about that? Plans for next season? To tell you the truth, I don't have any. Yeah, I might sell uh, Christiansen and Mansberg and maybe sign the blank playmakers. I am thinking about selling Fofana. Keep a one and Bellio up front. Keep Hendrik and Johnson on the right. Yeah, Johnson is going to play as a winger. Hendrik as an inside forward. And promote Pek Yoshia, who's uh, on loan. Anyway, that's enough. Oh, wait, I forgot. Don't go anywhere. We qualified for the Club World Championship. That's going to take place in 14 days. So next episode, I'll be back for that. And we'll take it from there. Thank you guys very much for watching. Remember to subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. I'll see you for the next one.